Our third island. Welcome to Salina, an island made up of two extinct volcanic cones. Not only is Salina known for being the greenest of the Aeolian Islands, it is also the main producing area for the famous Malvasia vine and one of Italy's main producers of capers. But not only that, there is also a bus connection between the villages and this one brought us to the town of Malfa. So we are walking now down to the beach in Malfa and not it's really nice and beautiful but it's also very quiet there are no tourists here yet I don't trust it yet but <laughs> maybe it's actually a quiet place turned out it's truly quiet and it was a nice place to sit out the following days of rain and prepare for our hike So we have some bad weather here on Salina, but anyway we're gonna climb up the beautiful mountain, one of the dead volcanoes. Here is the second one, That's here it seems like you have actually better view. Anyway, we there is also a refugio up there, so we're gonna sleep up there. So we mainly walk roads because the, the original Sentiero is, there are plants growing up to two meters and it's not cut or anything, it's totally wet and it doesn't make any sense to walk there. So we walk on the road, on the main road, it's not so bad because there is not so much traffic. It's starting to rain stronger again, so we're having a break. The humidity is at least 150% or something. <laughs> it feels like being in the jungle, soaking wet. But not from the rain, but from the humidity. The smaller mountain is called Monte dai Pori. You can also climb it, but as far as I know, there are no shelters there. We climb up to the highest point of Salina, Monte Fossa delle Felci, and we will sleep at the Refugio de Monte Rivi. Overall, there are multiple shelters on the mountain, nearly all of them are equipped with a barbecue area and also protect you from the rain. One important thing, always when you use such facilities, please leave as you found it or even cleaner for the next people to enjoy as well. We arrived at the refugio. It's quite nice, you have everything you need. Well, there's a chimney. Um, I also cleaned it already a little bit. Also, we brought our own wood from the, from the refuge, from the little place we just had lunch because I wasn't sure if there is enough wood but there is some, there is some, it will be enough for a little fire to keep us warm and maybe cook something. Back here are also places to grill, so I have some barbecue and stuff and something I really really like is the, is the pump here. There is a fountain down there and it's good fresh water so we will not run out of water which is really great. Also back here is some wood which is a little bit wet now but we will just bring a little bit inside so the next people maybe have some dry wood when they arrive here. So while we don't have very much to do here on the hut let me introduce you to some specialities. 
culinary specialties. So first of all, we have the Malvasia wine. Um, it's a, a wine typical for the Aeolian Islands and the main island, the main producer is um, Salina. And also we have some sweets, Sapori di Salina, the Biscotti della Nonna, so um, grandma's cookies kind of. They are quite nice. What I like about some of the sweets here uh, on the islands and also it's quite like the cannoli uh, in, in, in Sicily. They are not so super sweet. Of course, they contain a shitload of sugar, but um, they don't taste that sweet. You still have a lot of other flavors, what I really like. Talking about sweet, the Malvasia is extremely sweet. It has a uh, 16%. Um, and as you can see on the color, it's a bit darker than other wines, than the red or than the usual white wine. That is because maybe when you are from Germany or Austria, where at least the area where I'm from, then you know ice wine. And it's kind of in this direction. It's super sweet, uh, quite like ice wine. That's because the grapes are harvested very late and then after harvesting they let them ripe for 10 to 15 days in the sun and this is what makes them extra sweet. So anyway, let's try the Malvasia and today is my dad's birthday so alles gute papa, prost! Hit the like button and write in the comments to congratulate my dad. It's his, his 60, 60, 60, he's turning 60 today. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> mm hmm But they're flat. <laughs> Six AM and the next day starts for us. As the only ferry today to Stromboli takes off already at 9 at the harbor of Santa Marina Salina. So we just arrived on Stromboli. If you, if you follow this channel since more than a year, then you know I've been here before in winter. And for the two weeks or something I was here, I was probably the only person who doesn't live here seeing it now with the shitload of tourists is a bit weird. Anyway, it's still as beautiful as I remember, even if the weather today is not perfect, so I don't know if we can see the volcano today, but we will find out. Here on Stromboli, we stayed at Mario's place, helping him a little in his amazing garden with harvesting and installing an irrigation system. I already stayed here with him in 2021 and I'm always amazed by his huge knowledge about nature. If you watch this, thanks again Mario and see you soon. And of course, because of him, we know about the botanical treasures of Foggia Vecchia. This picturesque beach is only reachable after a little climb and from my previous visit I knew exactly where the big caper bushes grow, hoping that maybe one of them will already have an open bloom. All thought we are actually a little bit early, but nature meant it good with us and the exact plant I had in mind had the only open flower of them all. Look at this beauty! First time I see a caper flower in real life. Incredible, isn't it? We are also looking for an endemic plant here and I was quite sure we found it, but it turned out this broom is not what we were looking for. And so I had to climb up the steep and wild slope of the volcano to get to my target. Sometimes I wish that I had some more boring hobbies, more boring interests like, I don't know, cars or something. I went up here, my shirt is completely ripped, I'm bleeding on multiple... I'm, I'm totally dirty. Because I'm running up a volcano to find this 
endemic plant. And just like 10 seconds before I started to record this video, the volcano made a massive boom. <laughs> it's, it, it does this sometimes, so nothing to worry about. Anyway, look at this beauty. This is Chitisus eolicus. Very rare, very endemic to Stromboli and I think parts of Vulcano and Lipari. This special Chitiso species is very rare, listed as endangered with its big leaves and beautiful genestra-like flowers, which is why I mixed them up in the beginning. It only exists on parts of Vulcano, Alicudi and Stromboli. Sadly, here their habitat was decimated in the last year. More on that in nice. a few seconds. And look at this, it's quite easy to get down, because I can just kind of ski down here. That's the cool thing on volcanoes. But anyway, there is the vegetation beginning again. It's gonna be shitty again. See you down there. In May of 2022, so exactly a year ago, there was a huge wildfire destroying the northeastern slope of Stromboli. The fire was set by a film crew filming for a movie, according to the major without permission. This fire got out of control fast due to the strong winds and it took two fire flighting planes to stop it after several hours. How much of the vegetation is destroyed you can hardly see on these videos. Due to this fire, not only a lot of precious habitat was lost, the town of Tromboli was hit by one massive and a few smaller mud flows and landslides. A lot of infrastructure was damaged. Because there are no plants holding together the loose volcanic soil, it's much more likely that landslides and mud flows happen. Until the vegetation recovers, these events will probably happen more often, which will also take the vegetation longer to recover. You can see the vicious circle here. The unbelievable thing about this whole situation for me is that as far as I know, no one responsible for this disaster has been punished or fined. Let's go to something more relaxing before I dolphin dive myself into a black hole thinking about the stupidity of mankind. Stromboli. This lava spitting mountain, the lighthouse of the Mediterranean, sparked my interest in volcanoes. Although not quite as active as when I visited last time, it's still amazing to see and listen to all the phenomenal things that happen at this volcano. From the sound of explosions over the firework-like eruptions to the event of stones rolling down the Schiara del Fuoco, the street of fire, until they eventually land in the sea. And while I was telling you that an eruption of Vulcano would be pretty devastating, Stromboli is a bit more friendly. Due to its Strombolian activity, named after this very volcano himself, it releases pressure more frequently and therefore the eruptions are usually not that big. They still happen, but the chance of a huge eruption is pretty low, which doesn't mean they can't happen. The last bigger one was only 2022, leaving this new lava stream a preferred breeding spot for many seabirds. So that's it! That was our Aeolian Islands adventure. Filicudi was also on my list, but due to the bad weather the ferry connections between the islands was just out of order and we just ran out of time to go there. Anyway, we will leave Italy tomorrow, Amy goes home to Germany, I go home to Austria, we will collect some of our stuff and then meet again on our mountain hut in Bavaria where we will work for the summer season. There will be definitely one more video next week and during the four months of work I actually don't know how frequently or how many videos I will be able to make. So long, take care, have a great day and see you next time. Bye!